Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for less monkey business next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building King K. Rule, which apparently either stands for Keith or Kremlin, according to Greg Mails. I'm gonna assume it's Keith if he was named Kremlin Rule. That would be like a king named Human Command. Though I guess you don't get King Keiths all that often either. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to make our enemies fall for one of the classic blunders, getting shot with a blunderbuss. Next, we need a strong stomach, meaning if something hits our tummy, it's going right back at them. Finally, we'll get a little helicopter, and by that, I mean a helicopter we can put in our backpack. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, you've just got a couple of multi-classing minimums. Intelligence will be number one. You've got some great gear that apparently runs on bananas. That's a very eco-friendly fuel source, and the Kongs are just hoarding them. Bananas expire in like a week there's no way they could eat all of those bananas oh no i'm rooting for the villains again dexterity next all your weapons are either small like your crown or ranged even if they seem like they're fairly hefty wisdom after that your animal handling has to be pretty good if you're going to be king of the crocodiles follow that up with constitution heavy boys need hefty health pools strength is a bit lower than i'd like we actually won't really need it and we'll dump charisma you're intimidating but you're not really charming or cunning Kremlings are crocodile people, or lizard folk if you want to use 5e terminology, giving you plus 2 constitution and plus 1 wisdom. A bite attack, which means that your unarmed attacks can deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier and piercing damage, and because your jaws are so hungry, you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action once per short rest and gain your constitution modifier in temporary HP, which isn't a lot, but an extra chop when they're not expecting it could be helpful. You can hold your breath for 15 minutes at a time and use the bones of your enemies as a cunning artisan, making a shield, club, or javelin on a short rest out of their bones. I think K. Rool doesn't do this because the games are for children, but dang, can you imagine how hard you could hit someone with a Chunky Kong femur? You've got natural armor, making your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor, which takes care of one of our goals before we've even hit level one. That's pretty cool. You can also grab two skills from a short list. Animal handling and perception are nice if you want to lead animals with a vision. For your background, we need athletics and intimidation, which the soldier background gives, but swap in the feature position of privilege from the noble background to sit down with the other other kings in your world like Koopa and Boo. Sounds like a fun party. We'll kick things off as an artificer to grab the best weapons we can as soon as possible, but also to grab arcana and sleight of hand proficiencies from the artificer list, helping you swipe those bananas. You're a magical tinkerer, letting you put some magical effects into a tiny non-magical object, like a puff of smoke, a smell, or a message. You've got an entire frantic factory. I think you can set up a Tamagotchi. For your cantrips, mending fixes something by putting two pieces of something back together or repairing a small crack in it. It probably won't work on your belly, but it might work on your gun. Light will help you see in the dark with your dumb lizard eyes. I'd imagine if you can turn a castle into a Death Star, you can probably turn on a flashlight. For verse level spells, let's get the textbook physical boosters. I'm talking jumping long strider to triple your jump distance for a minute and add 10 feet to your movement speed for an hour. You're good at running and jumping because honestly everyone in Smash Bros is. Even Little Mac can jump like 8 feet in the air and in the game he's considered the worst jumper. Second level artificer is what we're here for, giving us infusions, little magical buffs to items that make you better than those primitive Kongs. Repeating Shot adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a ranged weapon, and you don't have to worry about ammo or reloading. Probably because the gun sucks the ammo back before firing it back out. I don't know. Returning weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a thrown weapon, and it comes back to your hand after you throw it. A crown would be an improvised weapon, at least for now, but eventually we'll call it a light hammer or a dagger. It's got points. Enhanced weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon. You can use a beam sword or a home run bat. It doesn't have to be stuff you brought from home. Finally, goggles of night give a creature 60 feet of dark vision in case you don't want to have a big bright light on you while you sneak into the Kong's treehouse and steal all their bananas. Third level artificers can choose a specialty. If you want to bring the boom with a bonus action, I always recommend going for Artillerist. This lets you summon an arcane turret that does one of three things. Either it's a force ballista, making a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 force damage with 5 feet of knockback, a flamethrower that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier, dealing 2d8 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, or you could make it a protector to give Kremlins within 10 feet of it 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier in temporary HP. 
Personally, I like the protector option for you. There isn't a great way to handle super armor in D&D, and one of the best things about K. Rule is that he's got that super armor. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement. Let's get that dexterity modifier higher, so when we start multiclassing, we'll be able to get the most out of it. And we'll multiclass into Monk, by the way, which seems weird for a big guy like K. Rule, but if your methods of pumping out damage are thrown, unarmed, and ranged, Monk is the place to go. Barbarians don't shoot stuff as good. Martial arts will help you with that unarmed thing, making your unarmed attack steal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier in bludgeoning damage and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with a monk weapon on your turn generally speaking your turret will be better but it's nice to have this option since you have the bite attack as a lizard folk though you can actually make that your unarmed attack for 1d6 piercing damage and use your dex for the roll as well lizard folk monking is kind of weird it's also weird because of unarmored defense since it wouldn't actually make your ac better with your natural armor until your wisdom hits 18 so don't worry about it. Your wisdom isn't going to hit 18. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool crocodile stuff. Step of the Wind lets you double your jump distance and dash or disengage as a bonus action, helping you get away after the whole Kong family shows up to fight you at the same time. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action so enemies have disadvantage to hit you, and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. This could be another way to enjoy your invincible belly, especially considering it would run out when you don't have key points. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action if you double dip before you double rip with your jaws. You also get unarmored movement, helping you go a little bit faster when you're not wearing armor. I don't think a crown counts. I don't think a cape counts. What is it with DK characters and not wearing pants? Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition. Kensei monks get Kensei weapons, which are weapons that make them a little cooler, or in your case, a little K ruler. Basically, these are expanded monk weapons, only restricting you from using heavy or special weapons. So a light crossbow and a knife would be great options for your blunderbuss and crown. With a melee Kensei weapon in your hand, you can make a agile parry, giving you plus two to your AC after you make an unarmed attack as part of your action. And with a ranged one, you can make a Kensei shot, adding a D4 to the damage of ranged attacks for the rest of the round with your bonus. Bonus action. The more attacks you get, the better that'll be, letting you hit someone with a ball, then suck the ball up, then hit them again. Of course, the main draw of the subclass is calligraphy skills from Way of the Brush. How do you go from Keith to King K. Rule? Calligraphy. In my notes, I spelled calligraphy with a K today. You can also deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your monk level and dexterity modifier, even bouncing the ammo back if you spend a key point, another way to put your big tummy to big use. Fourth level monks get another ability score improvement. More dexterity will help every attack you have other than the turret. So let's invest for that for now, not to mention better AC. You also get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. We'll get a flying speed before the end of this, but for now, it can be nice in case DK wants to yeet you off your own tower. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action for doubled the Kensei shots, doubled crown yeeting, or double crunching. You also get stunning strike, letting you spend a key point to force a constitution saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier failing that they're stunned until the end of your next turn giving you advantage to bite them call this the down throw because you're burying them you killed them but then paid for the funeral that's nice your monk die also bumps up to a d6 so now your crown will hit just as hard as your jaw sixth level monks can kill rob with all their hits since they get key empowered strikes and magical kensei weapons meaning your unarmed and kensei weapon attacks are magical in terms of overcoming resistances they also get deft strike letting you add a monk die to the damage die of one kensei weapon attack per round by spending a key point we need the beefiest projectiles for the blunderbuss this will set your damage die higher than a great axe with a light crossbow shot that's so beefy back over to artificer now fifth level artillerists get arcane firearm letting you add a d8 of extra damage to a ranged spell attack which um you don't have any you also get second level spells like enlarge reduce to make a creature one size larger or smaller if they're larger they get advantage on strength checks and saves and deal an extra d4 of damage with their weapon attacks meaning a light crossbow now deals 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 2d4 plus 4 piercing damage after a kensei shot and a deft strike that is a cannonball even if it doesn't deal bludgeoning damage talk to your dm maybe they'll even let it do bludgeoning damage you could also reduce a target for the opposite effect if they fail a constitution saving throw either way the effect lasts for a minute depending on your concentration but i'm gonna go for making yourself larger tiny gong is already pretty tiny sixth level artificers get tool expertise doubling your proficiency bonus with tinkerers thieves and smiths tools you get from the first level of artificer tools are the artificer thing so it would be silly if i forgot to talk about them in almost every artificer build wouldn't it you also get two more infusions and i'll level with you by the end of this build we're throwing both of these away cloak of the manta ray gives you a 60 foot swimming speed and full water breathing 
making you faster in the water than you are on land, like a crocodile. Gloves of Thievery give you plus five to your sleight of hand checks. I know K. Rule doesn't wear gloves, but these are invisible when worn, so ha ha! Maybe he does wear them. Again, we're throwing these away once we get higher level infusions. Seventh level Artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you as a reaction, an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. Save it for yourself, you should be within 30 feet of you. Eighth level Artificers get another ability score improvement, letting us cap off our dexterity modifier for the most accurate shots possible, which will help us get more damage later, more consistently. Ninth level Artillerists get an explosive cannon, buffing the damage of the ballista and flamethrower by 1d8, and you can make it explode, forcing a dexterity saving throw in a 20 foot radius, dealing 3d8 force damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. This will let you treat it like a mine from Captain K. Rule in Diddy Kong's quest. You also learn third level spells like Paste, which adds two to your AC, double your movement speed gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash disengage hide use an object or attack one more time which lets you get even more out of a kensei shot keep in mind you're gonna have to take a round off of actions and reactions when the spell drops in a minute or when you lose concentration why give k rule haste because it's good I'm honestly pretty comfortable giving it to just about any character. It's just going extra hard for a minute. Tenth level artificers are magical item adepts, letting you attune up to four magical items at once with two more infusions to learn. Winged boots let you give yourself a flying speed equal to your walking speed in one minute intervals for up to four hours per day. I don't think your DM is going to keep track of every use of this, basically just don't use it to try and fly across an ocean. This even gets buffed with your unarmored movement and haste, meaning your flying speed is 90 feet per round, or if you triple dash with a bonus action and haste action, 480 feet wouldn't it be wild if a heavy character was actually good at recovering and had super armor and had big damage and still was pretty bad in the game for your kingly cape i choose the cloak of protection giving you plus one to your ac and all your saving throws while you're wearing it making you a little bit harder to hurt 11th level artificers get spell storing item which puts a spell into an item of second level or lower and you or someone else can cast it using your intelligence modifier an amount of times equal to twice your intelligence modifier i'd throw in large reduce into something like boxing gloves you're straight up kaiju sized at the end of dk64 12 level artificers get our last ability score improvement or a feat the sharpshooter feat lets you fire at maximum range without disadvantage ignore all but full cover and take a negative five penalty to your attack rolls to add 10 to your damage rolls now we've got the biggest single shot we've ever had 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 2d4 plus 16 damage from a single shot while enlarged though hasting gives you another shot so an extra flat 15 damage instead of the 1d4 from enlarge i definitely recommend haste for more damage per round rather than per shot because it's better 13th level artificers get 4th level spells. Death Ward is going to be the last version of super armor, meaning a creature won't die the first time they hit 0 HP, hitting 1 HP instead sometime in an 8 hour period, no concentration required. Basically, this lets you yeet yourself into a fight without worrying about dying, at least for one round. Our capstone is the 14th level of artificer for magical item savant, letting you attune up to 5 magical items at once and grab 2 more infusions. Ring of Protection lets you add 1 to your AC and saving throws, just like the Cloak of Protection, so we don't have to invest in our wisdom to get the max monk ac of 20. there are a few different final items you could go for belt of hill giant strength headband of intellect but i'm going to recommend amulet of constitution for 19 constitution and effectively 40 more hp at this level helping you get real thick now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you've got big old shots with three attacks per round using haste each of which effectively has a d12 damage die from kensei shot and a plus 16 damage modifier each time that's pretty cool you're also very hard to hit with infusions natural armor and haste making your base ac 22 or 24 if you use agile parry not to mention plus two to all your saving throws finally you've got a flying speed and it's crazy good with haste unarmored movement and long strider Letting you get where you need to go for weaknesses you're mostly an artificer with a plus two intelligence modifier that's not good you also don't have a lot of strength which means that a big kong could just grab you and throw you off your castle finally you've got a bunch of concentration spells and even though you've got proficiency and the amulet of health you still have to pick and choose but you can hover out of range and just blast anyone on the ground with your blunderbuss get big spam your projectiles and punish those dumb kongs for not giving you their bananas just remember that when you finally land that donkey could make you look like a real jackass thanks for watching if you liked the video subscribe for more we're making a new video every day this month join the patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more and subscribe to tulak and mango for more tulak fun